the brand new Space Engineers free update and of course DLC is upon us. Good news engineer, we have the perfect weekend getaway just for you. And with a decent spacefaring vessel, you can get there from any of the home system planets in no time. Before you know it, you'll have arrived at Sparks the Future Station. It's hard to miss. Hey everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome back to my channel. As with every SE major update, I'm going to tell you all about the details today, discuss it, and give you my review on it. I want to give you all the information of where you can download it, and get the price out of it, etc. So let's dive into today's Sparks of the Future DLC and free content update for Space Engineers. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm going to jump straight in with the new free blocks that come as a part of this update, and of course the free features. Then we'll jump into the DLC content as per usual, I'll explain the price, where you can get it, and whether it's entirely worth it, etc. Alright, so our free content so far. Now surprisingly, with this update, we do actually get some very cool free components of it. The first one is a hinge block. Yes, something many of us SE players have been wanting for about 6 years now. We've had rotors for quite a while, and they do the job, but sometimes you really need a good hinge to maybe work with like vector thrusters, or something else. I don't know, I've seen a variety of creations so far that players have been coming up with a modded hinge block for quite some years now. Now of course this is now a free component of Space Engineers, so you just need to update your game on PC, and you're ready to go with a hinge block. So far we're seeing like thrusters, maybe some pistons on the hinge blocks, there's a variety of stuff you can do on it. Don't worry for fans of Conley Lost and Conley Wars etc, I've already put the good Dr. Kraz to work on creating a waffle iron that's already on a hinge. Also before I do go any further, there has been a fantastic space station scenario, which you see in the trailer, created by Zockley and a variety of other developers for the update, that is available via Zockley's workshop, I'll leave that link down below, and you can see me walking around in the background exploring it right now. Definitely suggest you give this station a visit, it's very fun to play with, and obviously it gives you an introduction to the new update and all the new features, particularly the sci-fi decals and the sci-fi blocks we'll touch on in just a moment. Now one big update for this is a small grid door. Yes, finally we have a small grid door, and it fits really well with certain creations. I know myself, I really like shuttles that you know walk out of Star Trek etc, where a player walks on a board rather than just getting straight into a cockpit seat. Now we can have the doors on there, and this is really going to make my series 10 times more easier in the long run. Now finally, uh, I know we do also have the 3D letters. This was something that was revealed to us a couple of weeks back. I was really hoping this was going to be a free component, and was a bit originally concerned they might try and put this in the DLC. After a few tweets, it does look like they may have put this as the free component. I'm not sure whether that's anything to do with what myself or community said, but hey, we've got 3D letters and they are a free component of the update. It's pretty box standard, they are letters that go on certain things, just like the letters mod we've had in the game for quite a while now. It's all in English, and I believe numbers right from 1 up to 9, also a couple of dashes, some punctuation, you're good to go essentially, you can put names on your ships now, or do whatever you want with them. I've already got some dodgy and crafty ideas how I want to troll my friends with letters, so we'll see how that goes later on. But finally we have letters, that's one less mod I now need to include in the builds I give you, so hey, even better. One of the big free components of this update is the automatic weather system. Well, since Frostbite, we've known that weather has been inside of Space Engineers. We've got snow, and that was cast using an admin command, and that was kind of the only way you could do it. Well, now, all planets with an atmosphere will experience weather in various degrees. The weather does depend on the biomes on the planet, so if you sit in snow, you're probably going to get snow. If you're in a desert, you're going to get a standstorm. Yeah, kind of giveaway really, isn't it? So basically, you're going to get unexpected showers. Certain types will also affect survival elements, which is really cool. Uh, I particularly like that, because it means if you're in like a dust storm or something like that, your solar panels aren't going to be as useful as they were before. I really love this, as it's going to make survival that little bit harder. So what weather types do you have? Well, I'll try and show you some of these right now. We've got fog, that's pretty straightforward, that spawns on the Earth like Trident, Alien and Titan. Uh, it's the most power dangerous weather in the game due to very low wind experience inside of it. So essentially your uh, your wind turbines aren't do very well and also uh, you're going to have to make use of solar panels, hydrogen engines or reactors to get your power, which is quite fun, so uh, I like that. Sandstorms are also a variant, that's pretty much a giveaway, you're going to obviously find it on Earth like Alien, Mars and Titan, you are going to get a lot of sand. Of course we have snow, we've had it for quite a while now, and one of my favourites which has been introduced, Thunderstorms. God, you do not know how long I wanted thunderstorms in the game. They were originally teased inside of a Frostbite update, somebody found them in the files, well now we have them here. Rain is also included, which is very fun, this can spawn a variety of plants. I'll leave a link in the video description below to where you can go and find that, which is pretty cool. Now if you're like me and film cinematic series, or just like playing around with the admin commands with your mates and want to troll them, hey, I know there's some of us out there, you've all told me you do it before, you can actually spawn these weather types with the admin commands. 
That's pretty simple. All you do is open your admin screen on Alt F10. Your admin menu will appear. You can select the drop down. It says admin tools, then switch to weather. You can then modify the weather in the biome below. It's pretty straightforward. You can force random weathers. You can create lightning, create weather, replace weather, or remove weather. There are commands available, such as smite. This command will create lightning, whatever you're looking at. It behaves the same as create lightning in the admin menu. Very similar to the Minecraft command of smite. I am going to enjoy using this so much, and I cannot wait to show you videos where we're going crazy with this. It's going to be hilarious. Definitely check out the automatic weather system. I am loving it. Another free component is the LCD rotate image function. Finally, we can rotate images in our LCD block, so you know how many years I've been wanting that for. Five new LCD posters are also coming along. These are a variety of sci-fi posters, all about the cosmic teams, the Thunder Fleet, and a variety of stuff. And of course, the Space Station, as I mentioned earlier, you can download it via the workshop below. Some fantastic creators have put some really hard work into that. It comes with a hotel, a shooting range, a shuttle, some really good trams running through it. I love it. Okay, let's talk about the DLC pack. Now, of course, first up, you're wondering, Jack, how much this is going to cost me? Well, straight up the bat, it is going to cost you your regional equivalent of $3.99 USD. For me in the UK, that's £2.89. Obviously, in USD, like I said, it's £3.99. This will be your regional Steam equivalent, so check it out in your own currency. It'll be roughly the same. Price-wise, I'm very impressed. For £2.89 here in the UK, that's actually a pretty good deal, and I like that. Not too expensive. That's about the same price if I go and buy probably a coffee from my local coffee shop down the road. So realistically, it's not that much for supporting developers. I will touch on this a little bit later in the video, as I know we always like to have a good discussion around that. And I also encourage you to tell me your thoughts on paid DLC, specifically what you think of this DLC and whether you're happy paying for it. But don't forget to listen to my thoughts towards the end of this video. Alright, so what's actually in the pack you're asking? Well, there's also some more sci-fi LCD panels. These are truly massive LCD panels for the biggest visual impact. We've always seen sci-fi elements, you know, like The Expanse and various other universes, where there are these big skyscraper LCDs on buildings. Well, now you can have them. Very fun. Next up, we've got Neon Tubes. This is completely customizable Neon Tubes. It's basically sci-fi, futuristic lightning, uh, lightning? Lighting is what I meant to say there. Uh, and you can put these around a variety of places. They're quite fun. We also get Sci-Fi Iron Thrusters. This is an upgraded Sci-Fi Iron Thruster and Thruster Flame. An entire new block, which obviously has its own um, Thruster Flame as well. Is it more powerful than the survival version? I haven't tested yet, but I don't think so, as that would kind of be a bit unbalanced. But I hope to test that later on. I'll update you when I find more information about that. Speaking of more thrusters, we've also got the atmospheric sci-fi thrusters. Pretty straightforward, it looks just like an upgraded sci-fi version of the already atmospheric thruster we use inside of the game. Next up, we've got the sci-fi interior wall. Uh, just presume everything I'm going to save here on out includes the word sci-fi, okay? We've got an interior wall, basically it's a sci-fi version of interior wall. Looks a bit more sleek and clean, it's going to go well with your sci-fi build, I like it. We've got a bar counter, you can relax with a bar, with your customers, inside your spaceship maybe. I know exactly what ship I'm putting this on. We've got a control panel. This is a new custom control panel you can have inside your ship. Kind of looks like a terminal you just find on the wall there. I like it. It's going to be able to bring creations alive a lot more. And also if you're running around maybe playing a multi-crew starship, this is going to help massively. We also have a sci-fi one-button panel. Clues in the name there. It's just a one-button panel. Then also we have a four-button panel as well, which has got four buttons on it. I really like the look of that. It's very sci-fi. Very nice. We also have a sliding door. This is very fun. It gives me massive sci-fi... Uh, Massive Star Citizen vibe, should I say, with a sliding door element, and you can imagine it's fitting well on a certain amount of ships. I love it. Speaking of armor skins, we have a sci-fi armor skin. This updates your build with a new sci-fi skin. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's just space and sci-fi themed, I guess. I don't know. It's just that's the way it looks. Not a massive fan of it myself. Can't see myself using it in many places, but I might find a way to put it. We also have two new armor skins. These are neon ones. Uh, I believe this comes with one colorful armor and one with colorful neon stripes. So you can color them in and change them to have you want to fit the build. Kind of interesting. And finally, we have eight new character emotes. They are whatever, yelling, charge, dance disco one, dance disco two, looking around, stretching, and one called come here baby. That just sounds weird when I say it like that. Now, as mentioned by the developers, I'm going to stress this here, all the items in the pack are cosmetic only. They provide screenshots, etc., and obviously I've put some video elements on screen. Now, the fact they're describing them as cosmetic only, because the thrusters, they must be the same. They've probably just taken the same uh, values and metrics from the default thrusters in the game and applied it to the sci-fi thrusters. I will be testing them out later and finding any differences, and I'll make another video about it if I do, but they seem pretty straightforward for now. Okay, so you're probably wondering, Jack, what do you think of this update? Well, I've had a couple of chances to play around with it now, and I like some of the features in it. The free components are definitely a big plus, and we always appreciate them. Hinges, not something I will typically use myself. I don't usually mess around with that. However, I can think of some very good uses of where I could use this. I did mention a waffle iron door earlier. Yes, we're probably going to end up doing it. Don't hold your hopes up for appearing Connie Lost, but I imagine it could be quite funny. 
The small grid door, love that, definitely gonna use it on my shuttles, and of course the 3D letters. Finally, a mod I've been using for like six years now has made it inside of the game as been a thing. Is it a little bit too late? Not at all, but it's finally nice we've got it here now. Yeah, it could have been sooner, but hey, it's finally here, and at least I don't have to pay for it. The automatic weather system, yes, give me more of this content, I love stuff like that. The DLC content is overhauled, do I think it's worth a price? Yes, yes I do. The price is only £2.89, you're supporting the developers there, and for the content you get, it's pretty good. Now I know a lot of you always ask and say, Jack, why can't this be free content as a whole update? Well, the developers do need to earn money, as this game has been out for seven years now, um, so that's kind of where that comes from. They do actually provide their own reason, which I'll quickly read to you now, and um, this is basically why you're releasing another DLC. Now, Mark writes this in his blog post, that's Mark Rosa, the CEO of Keen Software House, the developers of Space Engineers, and he says, Releasing another DLC gives us the opportunity to explore new ideas and provide more unique content the community wants. All players will be able to interact with the blocks, but only those who own the pack through the DLC purchase will be able to build them. So there we go, that's kind of how that's explained there. Do I support the idea of DLC? Yes, only if it's fair, if the content's good, and the price isn't outrageous. But realistically, for £2.89 or £3.99 USD, that's not much to be honest. Like I say, for me to go down and get a coffee at Starbucks or Costa Coffee, I'm probably going to pay around about three quid for a coffee anyway. So uh, <laughs> it's not that much realistically. So that's the way I look at it. And also it supports the developers and you get new content in the game. Of course, if you don't want to pay that, you don't have to. You can still use the blocks. You just can't build them. It makes perfect sense and gives a bit of initiative for players to support the developers and the game. Of course, I now open up the conversation to you. I want you to tell me what you think of the game and particularly this DLC update to it in the video comment section below. Do you support the idea of the developers using DLC content like this? What are your opinions on the price, aka £2.89 or £3.99 USD? Do you like that concept, or do you wish it could all be free? I know myself, I'm a bit of a cheapskate when it comes to buying stuff, I would love everything to be free, but at the same time I appreciate supporting game developers like Keen's Offer House and any other game developer I support, as they really do go a long way into ensuring this content. I have to take my hat off if I was actually wearing one right now and say a massive thank you and props to the art team at Kings of House. They have really outdone themselves with this update. Natik, the lead artist at Kings of House, who I've had the pleasure of meeting back at 2019's SE launch show, was it 2019? Yeah, um, has done a fantastic job at doing it and I loved it. Honestly, it's so good and uh, props to him and his team for doing it. Also, a big thank you to many of the modding community. I'll give him a shout out as well. Jakaria, uh, I believe he's called Jack as well, actually. He did the automatic weather stuff. Sekton, uh, Shaystall, Darth Biomech, Digi, Iron Hospital, Phoenix, and SE Modder 4. Those guys have like, done themselves with the contributions to the modding community, which obviously inspired Keen with the innovation of the modding community to um, give you an idea of what's in this DLC content pack and the free update pack there. So overall, I'm impressed with this update. I'm going to play around a bit more. I'm going to have, maybe have a live stream later and see what I think of it. But yeah, I like it and I can't wait to see more of it. Obviously, I'm really interested in your opinions as per usual. I like to open up the discussion with yourselves as my community and obviously the broader SE community and find out really what you're thinking right now. Of course, this is the second DLC update we've had this year. Yeah, it is, because we had Frostbite. So to be honest, we're doing all right so far. Again, the price for me, really bonus. I thought it might be a bit more expensive, but hey, £2.89, that's £3.99 USD. Honestly, I don't think that's too bad, and that's why I'm going to support it and say it's good. And also, the content is good as well, so I personally can't really complain. Once again, please let me know your opinions down below in the video comment section. Now, of course, I'm going to wrap up this video here, as I really want to go back to playing Space Engineers, and actually have to edit this as well, so you can see it on time. However, I have left a bunch of useful links down below in the video description, so should you need to find anything of use, such as Mark's blog post, the station download option, or where you can actually get the DLC, the links are available in the video description below. Of course, if you're new here, I do appreciate a subscription or a like on the video, and a comment telling me what you thought of it, slash the update as well, as it always helps me as a YouTube creator. I'm on route to 200,000 subscribers very soon, and it would be my pleasure if I could bring it to you, as I'm super excited to reach a milestone, but I've just basically lost all the words I was going to say. Hey, it's fun though. Thanks very much for sticking around this video. I've been Captain Jack. Don't worry, I'll be back very soon with some more Space Engineers discussions and updates to talk about, particularly where the game's going and when will we finally see a combat update. Stick around for that coming later next month. For now, I've been Jack. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.